Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kogesh, and I'm here with some leaders in the Decentralized Dance Party movement organization. Gary, co-founder, spiritual advisor, and Demo, tactical, strategic consultant, international player, dancer extraordinaire. Does that at least sum it up enough for you? It's what I do. All right. So I had the pleasure of doing my first decentralized dance party with Gary in San Francisco when I was called to be a speaker for the D10E conference there. And this... I, this is, I'm about to bear my soul here, so I, was like, I wasn't expecting to do this, but I was on the ballroom dance team in college. <laughs> no joke, and it was, it was, I, I did one semester. It was, it was to work on my agility to be better at rugby nice. and, and meet girls. But I, I haven't really danced like I did last September, I, like I did last September with Gary with the Decentralized Dance Party, and of course, on this interview, we're gonna have lots of awesome clips on top of what you're saying yeah. to let people know exactly what this concept is, but it is just, it is beautiful and empowering. And so Gary, I, I don't know if you wanna start with the, the founding, the idea of this, but what was, how did this happen? Um, I guess first, should I explain what it is, how it works? Yeah. So the Decentralized Dance Party is an open source party concept. We have an FM radio transmitter in a backpack and that beams music out to hundreds of boom boxes. They're all tuned into our frequency. And it creates a mobile synchronized sound system. Started in Vancouver back in 2009. And since then, we've thrown about 80 parties all over the world. We have a set starting point. We hand out all the stereos to people, say, please return these at the end. And then we lead them on a roaming party adventure. And the joy is, or the, the intention is to bring people together and set them free, just create these moments of perfect connection and transcendence in uh, the most unlikely environments, just like the financial district, places that are nothing's going on, there's no connection, people are just looking at their feet when they're walking by, and then you get these amazing interactions, people just joining together, perfect strangers, homeless people, any background, any style, and it's... It's this amazing form of magic that we discovered where we can unite the whole world, I believe. It's like the perfect scene it, that every music video wishes they could have, but they figured out how to do it over and over and over again and get it to a formula where it, it really is this joyous experience of coming together. And I, I have to say, I'm, I'm, you're, you're really dressed down today. This is, you're, you're almost like out of uniform. This is like your casual day off attire. I mean, normally you guys are... They're leading a party, you know, like with flashing lights and, you know, sticks that are like showing people the way and you're wearing shoulder pads and like there's, there's a whole like distinct culture that, that you've created around this as well. Like, can you talk about just how that grew up to be the phenomenon that it is today? How many how many of these have been done? Um, I guess the culture is kind of like it's inspired by the. All the most fun, crazy, iconic things from our childhood. Tom and I, we grew up in the 80s and 90s in rural Canada, and it was like we were obsessed with like Nintendo. Like I remember the Power Glove coming out it was that, like that scene from The Wizard was like our our generation's moon landing. We're just like, what is dude? The that? Wizard. Oh my God, so yeah, we're always wearing Power Gloves. I remember the first time I saw Neon, I was just like, it's crazy. Like how old are you, Gary? A new. How old am I today? Yeah. Or how old were you five years ago? We'll do the math either way. It's fine. Five years ago, I was 31, born on the 5th of November, 81. So we're the same age, 36. Sorry to, sorry to ruin it for everybody. But <laughs> yeah, so it's coming out of this, this, there is a generational aspect to this and sort of reviving that, but it's, it's more than that. And, and, and if I may turn this to Damo, because how long have you been involved? Literally like a month. So you got sucked into this, and you're already committed to traveling the world with Gary here and, and making these dance parties happen. What's the, what's the hook for you? Uh, it took less than five minutes talking to Gary to realize how deep this went. Like I had heard of the DDP before, and then ended up partying with him on New Year's, and after the whirlwind of a party where they're just whacked out at 10 o'clock in the morning about to pass out, and I said, okay, dude, what is this really to you? And I heard the heart that he communicated with and the depth beyond this is just a party in the streets. And then you know, we uh, unite around things like cryptocurrency and decentralizing infrastructure. And I recognize this incredible overlap in the Venn diagram of what they do uh, personally, 
for people and the world we're trying to build together, not just on this human level, but on a technological level. They use essentially uh, uh, the concept of mesh networking without actually using mesh network technology, but that's the next tech stack. And I said to myself, this can be a delivery mechanism for the new infrastructure. Uh, we could be designing or working with other people to define, design devices that meet our needs, that also meet the future's needs, and leaving them behind every time we go and do a party in the streets anywhere in the world. So explain tech stack. Uh, meaning that like we use currently an FM transmitter and a bunch of old boot boxes that we picked up at like thrift stores. But in the hopefully relatively near future, we'll have newly designed devices, things like, um, things like our jammy pack here that has just speakers on it. Could potentially be a device that has speakers on one side and an e-ink screen on the other and is built with mesh networking built in. We could pass them out cheap all around the world when we go to these things to do parties and we do the party and that's our tech stack for what we need to do the party, but we can make them cheap and functional enough that when we leave them behind, they are literally the infrastructure of the future. I, I never thought that I'd be like, yes, this is, this is how, how libertarians need to be dancing. Like This is, this is a, a different kind of partying, a different kind of celebration. So Gary, I just wanna you know, give you the chances to, to share what, what are your hopes for this, for where this is gonna go and, and, and what the impact for humanity this is gonna have long term? For the DDP? Am I overselling it? You're just like, man, we just wanna dance in the streets and punk people. And like, there's, obviously there's someone way deeper than that. And, and obviously that's, that's pretty easy to get, that it's not just, hey, let's come together and party and have a good time, because we're doing it in a way that represents deeper values of, of freedom, of, of individuality, of, of, of voluntary collaboration, of coming together and, and of that kind of harmony, right? Over the years, you must have seen that, you know, as you've grown this, that, that it's, it's, it's not just a representation of your values or the people doing that, but that it's, it's something really speaks to our universal human nature, right? Yeah, I mean, it's been an insane struggle, eight and a half years, losing money in so many ridiculous situations and sacrifices. But yeah, I think this is... Like when we talk about winning the Nobel Peace Prize for partying twice in a row and uniting the whole world in a simultaneous global dance party, I mean, dead serious. We have been for a long time. All this man needs is a Nobel Peace Prize, and, and I hope you will have earned it in a few years because this really does have that potential, and it, it's, it's beautiful to see. But, you know, I, got, I, I want to put you on the spot for some person, if you don't mind. Because you're, because, because like you, you, see that, that smile, man, that smile. You, you know, this, he's, he's like a straight man. It's it's hard to get him to, to relax. It's hard to get like look at it, like and it's it, it takes it, it takes music. Okay, he's, he's relaxed. He's he's stoic. But you don't expect this guy to be to be wearing what he's wearing. Like, you look at his face and it's like he's always, he's got the buzz cut. I mean, this is like hold on. This has got to be a throwback to like what what movie reference? What, what, <laughs> There's no specific reference, but flat tops are pretty funny and I, Iceman, right? Yeah, Top Gun vibe yeah, for sure. There's also the guys from Contra. You ever play Contra? That's what I was thinking. Yes, that's it. That's what I was thinking. People say Guile a lot, but that yes, was yeah. I don't know, that was the other more. I don't know. It just kind of this haircut came around. Divine timing. So you put on the shoulder pads and the lights and the helmet and all the other headgear and stuff, and you turn into a different person, or are you still you? Like, what? Because you have this, you have this beautiful, like, stoic personality that is really in conflict with, and he's the guy who's leading all these crazy, awesome dance parties. Am, am I wrong, Dan? Was this? No, no. And in fact, it was partially that that fascinating dichotomy that drew me in. You know, it's like he holds that space so well, and we need people that are calm and collected and have this joyous, transcendent vibe and are willing to carry that with us and for us. I think he said it better than you ever could about yourself right there. He's a great speaker. Call me a hype man, I'm down. <laughs> it definitely helps when we're interacting with the authorities and you approach them very calmly, explain like everything's under control. This is a family friendly event, everything's fine. All right, well, this is beautiful. I, I understand that you've made sacrifices over the years to make this possible, and now you're getting a little more exposure. I think you guys, it seems like you guys are coming to your own as an organization. You're getting to travel and speak and present and be incorporated into bigger events. I want to do that. I want to support that. What can people do other than, you know, going to your website, which is theddp.com? Yeah. Right, okay, so theddp.com. Of course, we have all the technical information in the description with this, but... What else do you want people to know? How they can support you? How they can how they can help out, or or maybe even host their own events like this? Yeah, well, one of the big 
next steps is to open source the whole movement. So I've been working on this thing called the official DDP field manual. It's kind of like a, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Military vibes. So. It's, it's official. <laughs> yeah. But we're waging peace instead of war, and that's this thing is a way you can actually wage peace. It's not like we're partying for peace as some kind of like ancillary thing. It's like you can be there in the street on the front lines uniting people and bringing it with boom boxes. But yeah, once the field manual's out, it'll be a lot easier for people to learn how to find a transmitter, build it, find boom boxes, prepare them, get all the people together, organize it, move through the streets without anyone getting hurt or any bad interactions with the cops. So it'd be great if people wanted to get on board with that. We have a Patreon. We have a lot of ways to support us directly on the website. And yeah, just learning about the greater decentralization movement, learning about liberty, and just getting out in the street with one boombox or however many and just I think partying well decentralized partying like I think the like we can go way back to like when the colonialists were going around and they discovered all these ancient civilizations like they all had these party rights where like the whole community would get together and they'd be bonded that like they'd go beat on drums and they'd have these like rhythmic celebrations that would unite everyone and then they're like oh this is evil we have to put an end to this stamped it out and it still persists like you have all these laws against drugs and alcohol not that we endorse those at all for partying <laughs> we try and liberate people from their inhibitions through the party itself but yeah centralized society like nightlife at least in the a lot of the western countries like you pay you buy a ticket you go to this area the atmosphere is so boring that you have to have alcohol or drugs mm -hmm. to even mm -hmm. have a decent time. And then, <laughs> yeah, there's there's restrictions against congregating in public, against making noise. Like, they basically stamped out the potential to have these connective experiences. Mm -hmm. So if you can get a boombox and go out, like, make a bike rave or any kind of mm -hmm. just bring music out into the world with a jammy pack, fanny pack, and <laughs> it's amazing the power of partying. We call it capital P partying. So there's a whole party manifesto on our website that goes into the essential ingredients of that, which is like costumes, atmosphere, props, playing the right music that's accessible and infectious. And yeah, just get out there and party with people, realizing we're all made of the same stuff. And it's totally aligning with the liberty movement and decentralization of everything, like Bitcoin is. That's one thing we say a lot is this isn't a resistance movement, it's an acceptance movement. I think that has to be the message of decentralists, liberty people everywhere. Like everyone can join. Don't say don't be anti anything, don't point out another, like we're all in this together. Awesome. Together we can succeed. And yeah, I wanted to say I was stoked way back in the day, I remember you were dancing in the Jefferson Memorial. I was like, This guy's all right. <laughs> Getting tackled. Yeah, it's awesome. Like it's so funny that like, yeah. I'm glad you get it. <laughs> the power of dancing. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Really appreciate it. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steamit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions including DTube, and you can find that through steamit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your post and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.